Welcome, you are listening to The Travel Wins, hosted by Pete Kotzbach. This is a weekly interview show about people who travel for work and all the ups and downs that go along with it. Here we go. Hey, welcome to The Travel Wins Podcast. Today, my guest is Eric Kozen, uh, co-founder of Chip Boys. Let me pull him up here. Woohoo! Chip Boys, the original. How are you today, Eric? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm excited to talk to you. It's it's going to be a, a fun conversation. The chips are good, yeah. so that really helps. <laughs> I'm glad you like them. When you said you had tried them, I was. Uh, I'm glad you were. I'm glad you you enjoyed the the samples you sent. So that's good news. Good, off to a good start. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing. That's they're they're. I I, I don't want to use competitor names. But they feel a little uh, lighter, I would say, than than some of the, the the competition. I don't know if that makes sense. That's just how I perceived it. Yeah, we've been fortunate because we've we've been scaling, we've been purchasing new equipment, but we've been able to maintain um, the authenticity and the artisanal and sort of authentic taste to the chip without compromising that as we've scaled. So um, yeah, we've really prided ourselves in producing a really good chip. Um, going to build all the fun and the branding side around it, but at the core, we just have to offer the customers a good product. Well, that that always helps. What, how long has Chip Boys been out now? So we've been we started the company two years ago, okay. and we really aggressively started selling. Uh, November this last November was a year, so eighteen months. You started Thanks. during co- during the worldwide pandemic. How fun was that? Yeah, it was the perfect time to uh, yeah. <laughs> to try to to try to hire people and 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 cross the border and and set up uh, set up production and purchase equipment overseas. Yeah, so um, it uh, yeah, actually we started with the idea in in twenty twenty and started setting all of it up. So uh, yeah, I, I didn't think of it that way, but yeah, it's yeah. kind of weird how it happened. But I, I, so far, it, a lot of the business people have. have actually came through the pandemic stronger, you know, because it, it, whether it gave them time to, to sit back and kind of reassess what they're doing or come up with some new ways to do things. And now they're seeing some of the results of it. Yeah. It created, it created a lot of opportunities for businesses that were born out of like supply chain issues for some of the yeah. large, you know, call it the bigs, which is how we started because when we thought of this, the, our competitors and the, the category leaders were, were struggling um, with their own supply chain and, and production issues. And so, you know, we didn't necessarily, we weren't thinking of this as, as a brand or a global brand. We, we just said, well, let's build, let's build this because we, my, my partner, Michael has strong distribution ties in, in the U S and so like we can make it, I can get it into stores and we can have ourselves a, a nice, you know, a nice business. Yeah. And then, um, and it kind of evolved from there, but yeah, it really started from, to your point, from uh, some opportunities that came about through, through the, the struggles of, uh, you know, of uh, supply chain issues through because of yeah. the pandemic. Well, that, that's why I always like bringing up the fact that it, I can't believe you started a company in the middle of the pandemic, but it ends up working out for different reasons that you never would have thought. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, uh, it was just one of those, those things where just right time and right place. And then it just evolved in, into a bit more because some of those challenges that that people were having um they just haven't recovered and they just kept calling and then they like the flavor of the chip and it just kind of grew from right. there so yeah. how big now I, I there are trade shows for food and you know if have you been to many of those yet do you go to the- i yeah we so our team our sales team is traveling almost weekly they're in trade yeah. shows there's you know because of the the retail channels, their their segments. You have you have convenience. You have your gas station shows. You have your travel expos that do like your your huts and your airport shops. Yeah. Um, grocery. So there's there's shows every every weekend somewhere. Yeah, that's that, that that I don't know that a lot of people realize how much travel there actually is, like in food or even like in, I used to be in construction, and you'd think, well, it's just construction. Well, like no, they had the KBiz show, they had builder shows, they had Shows in Vegas, shows in Dallas, shows in San Francisco. So you end up traveling. Yeah, it's a whole, it's a whole, uh, it's a whole circuit 
you know, and especially as a manufacturer, if you're a buyer, you know, you're trying to see what's new and what's trending, but as a manufacturer, you realize you have to pay attention to all of those different channels. So you're, you're, uh, I won't say forced, but you do feel like you, you do feel like you're missing out. You have a little bit of FOMO if you don't go to yeah. a, you know, to the grocery show or to a, you know, to a seven 11 show or one of the large distributor shows. So. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah Cause I, Walmart has their own show. Uh, yeah. I, I had a, a spokes model who, who was just in Arkansas, I guess is where they're. And she's like, yeah. And she was just like a, a promotion announcer. So she got to fly there to, but they have their own trade shows. Yeah. yeah what, what kind of, what's the kind of channel that, that, uh, if you have your chips, uh, I mean, do you go, God, I really want to get the grocery stores or do I really want to get the convenience stores or the gas stations or what's the biggest channel, do you think? So, so for, for us, um, I mean, it's all need, it's, it's all need state of the consumer, right? Like if they're planning their purchase and grocery, you know, does, does extreme well because the pack sizes are typically, typically bigger or they're buying the multi-packs for kids lunch and things like that. But for us, um, and we're getting into grocery this year, but we we were really looking at um, when we launched some of the underserved markets, like the independent chains. Yeah. That when they're sort of the last ones to get serviced, if a supplier is having issues, you know, they're going to get their 17,000 7-Eleven and Circle K's dialed. And then they're going to, you know, uh, have the cash and carries. And, and, and those are sort of probably a second and third priority for them. So we started off looking at a lot of those independents, the bodegas um, and the C store channels uh, as our, yeah. as our priority because they were the underserved um, because of the supply chain issues. So for us, they, that was, that was the priority and felt like we could build a core at that level. Cause those are the impulse purchases. Those are the, you know, some of the kids walking after school, yeah. some of the, the workers, um, you know, on their lunch break, grabbing a soda and a bag of chips. And then from there, you could sort of evolve your brand into convincing people to buy a 10 ounce or multi-pack and things like that. But right. the, the C store was like that, that entry level for us. That's pretty Your background is, is motorsports, though, right? It's, it's off-roading. How, how, how did that? Yeah. Mar marketing. And, and so I, I sort of, it was my hobby and my passion growing up. My, my dad raced uh, professional motorsports growing up and I raced, mountain bike professional mountain bikes for a few years um growing up as well and i just turned that into work like i said yeah. i said i want to be around this all the time and so i i um i got into marketing and and action sports marketing and branding around around motorsports and and sports wow. in general um and so turned that into a a career and and that's helped fund the hobby keep the hobbies going but it, yeah it's been around <laughs> It's been around motorsports, um, off-road racing, do a lot of racing down in Baja. You know, but even like with, with the other companies you've worked for, for marketing, I mean, you, it's just curious how, how you go from like, cause you, you, you work for very large companies. It was, was it always in the back of your mind. Like, Hey, if I, I could do this on a smaller scale, was it, was it just, yeah, you, you learn, I, yeah, you learn a lot. I mean, fortunately, you it's like a master class. I was fortunate to work for yeah. some Fortune 500 companies in the past and being able to sit in the same room and take in a lot of that from from the executives and the, the chairman of, of uh, you know, chairman of the company. And, and you start to, you know, just take in and learn as much as you can. And yeah. And and so, I mean, I can only hope that we're 100th as successful, or, you know. Be, be even close to being as successful as them but yeah it's uh you start to you start to feel more comfortable more confident in in being able to sort of figure out the the formula for success and yeah and giving yourself at least the best chance to succeed well yeah you, you have i guess small children you have you know younger children how how much uh of did does that come into play like you're sitting here going you know because it was two years ago let's say your kids were seven 10. Seven and ten, yeah. You know, you go, man, if I start this, it's going to mean a lot of hours, a lot of time away from my family, or should I just go get a normal job and just be home at night? 
it uh <laughs> it, it comes up a lot it comes up a lot. I mean, well i mean to me in, internally it does right yeah like you're always you you always think uh you know the the time that goes into to what you're doing and then what you're building for them in terms of their futures and what that means to the to the family so there's there's always this sort of um you know just internal debate about doing those things but um I, I will say for as much time as I'm gone or, as, you know, on the phone and those types of things, I mean, we're blessed to be able to go to the, you know, take the time to go to my daughter's, you know, awards presentations or be at my son's basketball practice and make those, you know, just those commitments to myself and to the family to say, you know, I'm going to be there for them on these days. And it's regardless of what's happening around me. So you lose a lot, but I think you also gain a lot. And I, I learned something at where I was at before there was one of the, the executives made a point and it was interesting to me because as busy as he was and as many millions of dollars were running through the business at five o'clock every day, he was like from five to six, it doesn't matter what it is. Nothing is scheduled. And I, and I always respected and appreciated that. And, um, and with my own business now, I try to keep respect of those, those certain hours for the family. Yeah. Yeah. That, so, because obviously now the, the problem I run into is I, I now have the time. So now I find myself just working on, I'm either on the show or my day job. And I'm just like, oh, I got to, I got to teach myself to turn it off because there's no kids yelling at me anymore. Right. Right. So, yeah. They, they sort of, they sort of, uh, they sort of force you. And then as you know, we were talking about, you know, you're having at the point of having grandchildren and then you realize yeah. your own kids grow up so quick. And so, um, I, I, I don't want to miss any of that. And they're, yeah. they're, uh, they need you there for the first four or five years just to, for their own survival, right? Like you got to keep them, keep them away from themselves. And then now, you know, they're starting to, you know, they're fun like yeah. nine and 12. They're, they're little people that, you know, they're fun to be around and can make you laugh. And, and, uh, yeah, so you don't want to miss their own those clothes on. Like, they can take their own clothes off. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah, I know it, my daughter's good. Yeah, she's got her lunch packed and she's ready to go. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I just, I, I don't want to miss those moments because I, I feel like before I know it, they're going to be, you know, off to college. It happens. Yeah. Is that a discussion you, you have with your wife often? You know, how, how to keep, because that, that's always about scheduling, right? It's like whether it's a five to six kind of shut off or like we have a nine o'clock shut off at night, you know, or no computers, no phones, that type of thing. Just yeah no and my wife's you know she's great and sort of even something i learned later in life it's like you know you're not like just because you're physically somewhere doesn't mean that you're present you know yeah mentally and so it's like you're just sitting there and your your thoughts are somewhere else and so um yeah i really just try to make a point to, to carve out those those t those times those hours those moments for the family and then maybe it's you know, maybe it means I'm working after they go to bed, but I'm going to give them, yeah. you know, two hours before before bed or an hour after they get home from school to, to spend that time with them. Because a lot of why I'm doing this is, you know, we're hustling for the family. We're hustling to, you know, to have that that thing we can give them. But uh, I don't want it to come at the expense of watching them grow up. It's the, it's the balance point, right? Everyone's got different... Uh... How much time? Because I, I, a lot of people tell me like I'm on the road and they're like, oh, I could never do that. And I'm like, well, I can never do what you do. So, I, I mean, I could, but yeah. I just want to. So it's, it's always it's yeah, and, and probably and and we'll come to a point where they probably won't want to hang out with me in a couple of years, anyways. And so that when that time one. come when that time comes, you know, and, and they're off doing their own things and they want to be with their friends, then then uh, you know I'll hit hit the road a bit more, or I'll I'll, I'll kind of pivot <laughs> my focus a little bit, but. You know, but for now, like I said, nine and twelve. Um, oh, that's a sweet spot. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy them as much as I can and, and put my time into the business. Um, you know, as much as I can, and like you said, find that balance. But it's part of part of life, and and, uh, oh. and then find time for ourselves as well, right? Like, I was gonna say that the uh, <laughs> yeah, the the touch of your subject is how do you make time with you and the wife. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, the job, uh, wife got, and yeah. wife and racing. So it's one of it's it's, it's both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, no, she's great about it. She she works from she works from home as well. So when the kids are gone, we have, you know, we have 
time to ourselves. And then the real golden hour is, you know, once they're, they're asleep, but we've gotten pretty well trained. They're about eight 30 to nine o'clock you know, bedtime. Cause they're not the like my, you know, my brother. I'm sharing my brother's uh secret, but his kids go to bed at like midnight or something. I'm like, I don't know how you guys do it. Like that's way too late. I want him in bed by nine. So I've got at least, you know, a couple hours to sort of decompress yeah. and, and, uh, you know, focus on focus on the day ahead and and reflect on you know with uh, with my wife on on the day we just had. Do you do you, do you have any uh, rituals? I I when I'm when I'm home, we have to go date date night once a week. That's that's kind of the rule. Um, yeah, we're, our schedules are still pretty scrambled yeah. to to do a, a once a week, but yeah, Friday nights we do. Well, I, I would say Friday nights like sushi night, like it's kind of a there you go. I think that's our thing. We we indulge and it's our our comfort food to, to <laughs> reflect on the week we just had. So yeah, I would probably say Friday nights kind of the one night we, we uh, as a family go out and, and pick up some sushi, make it work. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a date night. Those are always the tough ones. I mean, like you know, your job has to succeed, your kids have to succeed, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, I'm married. Yeah, because it, what's it all? Again, it's like what what's it all you know what's the real end yeah. game of this whole thing <laughs> end up with the very successful business and then do you, do you still partake in the, in the motorsports aspect yeah that's my that's my um like i said it's a it's a, a passion it keeps me balanced yeah as far as um you know it keeps you feeling feeling you know keeps the adrenaline and blood flowing gives for me personally it gives me a purpose to to feel um in terms of health and, and just motivated because it's hard for me to just work out and do things without like a goal in mind. So, you know, looking at the race schedule, I see, you know, it gives me something to, to races every couple yeah. months to look forward to and stay, stay motivated and healthy for. So, um, yeah, as long as I can, as long as I can, uh, afford it and, and physically do it, I, I will just, uh, are you in the cars or, or motorbikes? Uh, I was into to mountain bikes growing up. Yeah, um, a little bit of dirt bikes, and then the you know ha having again it all comes back to kids. You just feel a little more responsibility about getting injured and what that oh, means yeah, yeah. off of work and all that fun stuff. So, um, so I moved into into cars, and they say with age comes a cage. So <laughs> I so I so I have a four wheel four wheel vehicle with with roll cages, and it keeps me relatively safe. Now, uh, is it all desert or are you, are you hitting Glamis or? Um, for, for us, it's all desert, primarily in Mexico, in, in Baja, California. So from, um, well, you know, Southern California. So like San, from Tijuana, you've got Ensenada, which is right up along yeah. the coast. So most of the races start in their Ensenada or San Felipe, which heads over to the Sierra Cortez. So they're almost all exclusively in, in the, at least the ones that I do in the Baja. Yeah, well, that's cool. Though. Which is desert. Yeah, you get to take desert. the kids with you on that. Is that kind of summer trips or? Yeah, so it was. I mean, I thank my my dad for this because I grew up following him around the desert as a kid, and it, you know, it was a yeah. a passion a passion of mine and something that, again that I said so one day I want to do this, and so um, it's important for me to share that with the family and, um, you know, have them travel with me and exposed to different cultures and experiences as well. So when I can, they, they come with me. I was going to say, I think that's really important for, I mean, it's almost more important for the kids than just the schoolwork. Yeah. Cause they, they get to see, I mean, they, they learn a different, I mean, there's opportunity to learn a different language, which, yeah. I, I mean, I speak Spanish. My wife gets mad because I don't teach the kids enough Spanish, but, um, but it's an opportunity to be at least be exposed to, to the culture into the language um I mean, my daughter's at a, a, a an outdoor you know field trip hiking today because it's like there's no better way to learn something to yeah. just do it and see it and, and feel it so I, I feel the same way about trying to bring them with me to the events uh, I, i'm curious have you is it going to be exciting for, for the kids to really see chip boys like in the stores when they go into the grocery store or 7-eleven or and they go hey that's my dad's car yeah, so we, they they would they would get like that before when I was working with the beverage the beverage yeah. uh, brands when they would see things that I would 
be working on here at the house and they'd see it on the screen. I'm like, oh, this is, you know, this is coming or this is a promotion we're doing. And then we go over to the Circle K and it's, it's on a, you know, billboard and, yeah. and, uh, or I would be traveling, you know, somewhere internationally and say, hey, this is what we're working at today. We're at this event. And then they see it like, oh, you told me about that two months ago. Um, and they've been that way about, about the chips, um, especially for now taking it to school because their friends like them. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, yeah, this is, this is, you know, this is my dad's company. Yeah. So they get a kick out of that. And then because it's packaged, it's a packaged good. Like they re- they see how, how much work goes into it. Yeah. To, you know, so they're, it's not, um, you know, it's not like anything that, you know, we just printed a logo on a t-shirt and they're like, ah, whatever, you know, that's cool. This is something that, that, uh, they enjoy sharing and, and realize that it's like, dad's doing something pretty cool. Yeah. That's very cool. What, what, uh, what, a, do you have any big events coming up or anything? Uh, I don't know as far as your endorsees or anything that you're doing like that. Yeah. So we're, so we've been, again, it's, it's been interesting how, how it evolved and we saw it in, in just in the CPG space in general, like you think a category is mature and you're like, well, it's kind of run. And you and I were talking about it with, yeah. you know, with your industry, like you, you're like, okay, it's mature and it's stable. And this is, this is where it's going to be. And then sometimes you, there's new blood that's just inserted into the, the whole category that you're like, okay, wow, we're just going to have a boost right now. It's all incremental and it's coming yeah. from, you know, from a show or from, you know, from someone who endorses. And for us, it was kind of the same thing. We thought, well, this cat, this whole category is mature. You know, everyone's pretty much a big player, you know, yeah. what's going to be, what's going to be this thing to lift it. And, um, and we've seen a lot of that growth um, internationally. We we launched in Europe. Um, we launched in, in Germany, and then we launched in the UK. They've picked up Poland, Switzerland's on board. So, um, mm-hmm. so we have a lot of exciting things happening in Europe. We're talking about potentially opening up a factory in Europe in the next in the next twelve months. So, um, and it's just evolved from from uh, just this sort of pent up demand for yeah. something new and fresh that as the co- category sort of matures and maybe plateaus a little bit um you know we just we were able to come in at the at the right time so the 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 european expansion you know pretty exciting for us right now yeah, that's cool you know i was gonna say how, you know how do you make a chip a, a, a tortilla chip different than anybody else's tortilla chip you know what i mean it's like but you you, you had mentioned earlier uh a little better for you kind of category, you know? Yeah. And to your point, like you were asked, you know, you were talking about the kids and, and their involvement. Yeah. They, because of social media, I mean, it's surprising how much they are really tuned in to yeah. what they're consuming. Like, I don't think, you know, we probably didn't. We did. <laughs> I, I, I talk about that all the time. I had no idea. <laughs> no, no, I mean, if I, some of the stuff, you know, my mom used to make me for lunch or that, you know, we would just, you know, we would, eat back in the day you're just like ah no big deal yeah. um but with social media and some of those things uh they they've really become more aware of what's of what they're eating and yeah. so i i do think I, I do think as a whole even the retailers you know they as like i said as the category starts to plateau a little bit and we've seen it with with water recently with uh, liquid death as a brand that i that yeah. i respect what they've been able to do sort of infusing energy into the water category and they just put it into an aluminum can and some really fun branding. Um, but they've been able to carve a niche out for themselves. So I, we, we're seeing that on the, um, I, what I'd call like the fun chip space, I think with okay. spicy chips, because you, you have like your traditional ones that are just better for you, but the kids they're like baked and they have all those types of things. Um, but within the spicy or just the rolled chip category, it's more mature but there is, uh, and it's again because having the kids at home, there's definitely more conversations around that better for you option. Yeah. Like they don't, they don't necessarily want a baked chip. Maybe it's a little bit boring. It's not the cool bag to go to school with. It's you know, it's just it's mom and dad's product. But <laughs> yeah. they want they want something like Chipoys that's fun. Um, our branding's fun. We're a lighthearted company, but the chip's better for you. You know, we're gonna eliminate the chemicals we have a smaller ingredient panel our process yeah. is 
not quite on the level of clean, but they're cleaner. It's just better for you. So we're limiting a lot of the coloring agents that some of the other brands have um, and things that I'd want to be, you know, I feel comfortable and proud of my kids eating. Yeah. Well, I always, I always tell people better is better, right? So, I mean, if you can eat. If we're, if we're that much better, it's still better. <laughs> better is better. I mean, yeah. because if I eat your chips instead of some of the, the, the ones that aren't as, as clean, it's more, more of the chemicals, you know, like the better is better. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it, it, uh, and it does, it does make a difference and it, and not just from a, from the kids and their trends and, and kind of their, you know, what they think is, is better for them, but the, the science behind it, you know, is, is proving that, that there are long-term effects and, Unfortunately, you know, Europe and some of the other countries are a little more forward and yeah. progressive in terms of the regu- you know, the regulatory side of things. And so they've banned some of these chemicals already in in other countries yeah. and, and the US just hasn't yet. So um and that's the formulation we're selling to Europe is the one that's already that's already uh, removed a lot of those and we're working on the same for the US being ahead of whatever regulatory um, yeah. you know restrictions might come come our way so is it yeah we'll uh, hope to be better is it is it more for is it more expensive to make it cleaner yeah of course every, every like the 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 coloring that gives it the red for example it it's not expensive but for us to make the decision to put you know beta carotene as the red and have a more stable that's not gonna you know that's gonna keep that coloring it's more expensive. So um, as a company, we've decided to hold our, our long-term strategy is to hold price and not increase price based on the, on using, you know, the better for you ingredients. Um, hopefully just overall as the market and pricing sort of stabilizes, I mean, you may have to, to look at pricing just because of the overall market, but yeah, our, we don't, we don't want to charge more for a better product. Although yeah. it is more expensive. I was, it, it's always, I guess it's, it's frustrating to me because like when I go out and a soda is a dollar and the water is two fifty, you know, it's like, yeah, I want the better option, but I don't want to spend two and a half times the, 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 the amount. Yeah. There's less, yeah. There's less water in that. soda. <laughs> yeah. It's probably, yeah. So it's, uh, it's all, you know, I mean, cause you look at like, you know, high, we don't we don't use it, but in like you said, in, in certain beverages like high fructose corn syrup is not expensive. It's cheap, but but the better you know, putting real ingredients is, and uh, and we you know, I think there's it's taken ten years, but there's finally you know people starting to look at the back of cans and, and labels and things. So it's yeah, uh, I mean, dude, I, I literally was just talking about that with my wife. Like growing up, you just drank a Coke or a, you know tab or Mr. Pib or Dr. Pepper, whatever, you just drank it. You never, you never even looked at the can. And now yeah. you're like, oh my God, that's a lot of sugar. Yeah. So. Well, and especially for us, you know, being on the marketing side and you're, yeah. you know, you're the face of your brand when you, you know, when you're out traveling, representing your companies. Um, but you want to be proud of what, what you have. You know, I mean, you, you, you work with great brands and you walk into the store and you're proud of what you're selling, you know, it's sure. a quality product. And, um, you know, we're the face of, you know, we're the face of our companies. We're the, we're the ones when we're talking to other parents, like, yeah, this is what we're doing. And I don't want it to be garbage. I want it to be, <laughs> you know, I, you want to be proud of what you, of what you're, you're offering. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's about, it's about just really putting, putting something you can be you can be proud of and, and yeah. also uh, that you'd want your own kids consuming. You, you got to make money, but that's more of the balancing, right? I guess. Cause you could make it cheaper. Yeah. 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 Things yeah, we could do in the, in our industry to make things cheaper. And we just don't because it crosses that line of, uh, uh, I don't want our labor to be at 20, 10, 10 cents an hour, you know? Right. Right. And the quality that people have, Come to expect from sure. you know because there's a reason why you know your brands have been around for you know 50 100 years is because of yeah. the, the the quality and yeah to your point there's there are corners that 
that our competitors, you know, are, are cutting not, and it's not, that's just their business decision. Right. And it's not that it's, it's any, it makes it, you know, a dangerous product or anything different, but you know, it's just could be anything could be how often you want to change the oil to make sure it's, it feels fresh. You know, you're not running it, you're running it through the filters, how often you change the filters, all of those things. And so to maintain that, that sort of, um, that consistency and that better flavor, it's just those little things that we want to do different. Yeah. And, and, but that all costs money. I mean, if you can get a couple extra runs out of a filter, then I mean, yeah, over time, that that's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and I think we see it and we all have our, our, our favorite brands that we, you know, to your point that we've had over the years. And then you walk in and you, the bag looks the same, but you grab, you grab whatever it is you're eating. You're like, this doesn't taste like I remember it. It's, yeah. you know, those little, those little corner, yep. you know, those little corners that are cut, um, you know, maybe it doesn't, maybe it doesn't affect the business and they can get away with it. But, uh, for now, while we can, and we're at that, we're at that, that small to mid and growing, we're trying to build a lot of those, those consistencies and the quality into our, into our scale. Yeah. And so for as long as we can, we're, we're going to keep trying to produce the, the best possible, best sure. possible product. And, and being mindful of that as we as we scale and not build something so complex and so expensive into the product at this level that we're like oh shoot we could never scale to the service is, yeah. and then we we can't ever do it you know to to build a process into this whole thing that is impossible to scale or extremely expensive to scale so we're we're looking at as we make these sort of jumps in production and in, in product development to make sure or at least consider that it's something we can do, you know, at the highest level as well without being forced to, to cut corners. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, but do, do, is there ever a point where you, you, you hit your, you know, we're going to do 20,000 bags. I don't know how you, how you count it, you know, and then all of a sudden you get, you know, target or Walmart or somebody big comes in and says, Hey, we're going to go deep. And all of a sudden, Every- 50,000 bags and you're like, oh, holy shit. Yeah. Every, every day there's days when I love the sales team bringing in orders and POs yeah. coming. And then there's times when I'm like, guys, just <laughs> give, give speaking of travel, speaking of travel, can you guys take a look, just take a break for a day or two, and, yeah. you know, and just l- let us just catch up a little bit. Cause it's, um, it's the, the blessing and the curse. Cause also we're at, I mean, we've been fortunate. We just ordered some new equipment, but right now we're, we're at like because of the extra hours, I mean, we're at one hundred and twenty percent of what we should be running in terms of production. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't. It's 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 definitely a, and it's not a switch you just turn on tomorrow oh. to decide. Let's go make, let's go make, you know, let's double capacity to start yeah. enough hours in the day. So, yeah, it's definitely. There's times that I'm like hold off on that follow-up and let's give us a chance to, <laughs> to catch up a little bit <laughs> let's just give them another sample first and we'll, we'll yeah 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 let's go let's, yeah we're buying buying uh sending the team on on little cruises for the weekend with no internet no phone service yeah, exactly. you know? <laughs> off selling for just a minute yeah yeah well what, what's the work work right now where can people buy chip boys or, or at least try them out whether you're offering it online or uh, online's the the easiest. We've really leaned into our partnership with um, with Amazon. Obviously, they, they they do a great job. Um, so we have our our website chipoys um, c h i p o y s dot com, and um, and then our online sort of e commerce platform is through our online store on on Amazon because of they just do such a great job with fulfillment. So all of our social media, um, our web links out to Amazon. So um, they've been a, a great partner, par- partner of ours. Um, and then, yeah, we're in, uh, we're in Walmart in Texas. We're uh, in Food Lion for anyone that's listening on the East Coast. We're in a few hundred stores in Food Lion. And then we're launching uh, Dollar General 7,500 stores. Uh, started shipping two weeks ago. So hopefully first week of June, we'll be in, in Dollar General as well. So right now we've got about 
30,000 stores were in across the U.S. That's awesome. What, what would be your, your, your target? Is it 100,000? Is it 200? I mean, because 30,000 sounds like a lot to me, but that's just my industry. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, well, we're, we're, we're selling uh two dollar bags of chips. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're selling something a little a little higher, so you can get away with three hundred dollar pair of boots. Yeah. 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 So, um, but uh, yeah. I mean, I think I think it's just good good growth and being able to to have the the company well well represented across all those doors. If it if yeah. it means you know if it means Walmart, um, you know, and get into obviously our C store. So, I think. Just making sure people can find find the product, you know, whatever that number of doors is, and then internationally to have good solid representation and have the brand well represented. And so, and sky sky's the limit, I guess. Yeah, we'll see, I, what, I, we'll see, we'll see what that like number is. You got a good product, so I mean, you, you know, you you know the business. It's just a matter of being patient and 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 like you you've been talking about scaling it scaling at the right times and with the right product and people. Yeah. We wanted to start with the good, start with the good product and then um, you know, the rest would hopefully figure itself out as people get to try it and just, just keep, keep having people, you know, try it has been our best, you know, one of our, I guess in terms of, in terms of, uh, you know, having people sample the product, it's been our best marketing just because it, it does taste different yeah. than, than what's out there. So, um, yeah, we just keep just keep going, keep building a good product, keep building a good product, and and let people try it and and uh, let it stand on its own. Perfect, man. Well, I appreciate it, and I I, I really appreciate the chips. They're uh, they're they're yummy. So I'm gonna have to get some more now. Yeah, we'll have to send some more out. So when you're when you're on the road and out traveling, having fun, you can uh, yeah, you can have a little snack to. <laughs> that's exactly right. To dive into. I mean, that's, that's why I'm a chip guy. So I was like, oh, these are pretty tasty. So I, yeah. It. Well, and you'll notice that, that like, yeah, the, the original, I mean, it's pretty, there's three ingredients I mean, salt, yeah. well, the, the chip and salt, salt, the lemon flavoring and, and that's it. So it's not a whole lot, a whole lot to it. Well, even like the spicy ranch, like you were, it's not super spicy. It's not death spicy. It's just a nice kick. You know, which adds to a ranch, which every, pretty much everyone's had a ranch chip. So, yeah. yeah. Well, it was funny. We were trying to get that. We were trying. We were trying to get that flavor uh, set up in in Mexico at the factory with the flavor house, and ranch isn't a very popular flavor. <laughs> so we were it, that one took us longest. It was like we could not. We could, you know, we could not like nail down the ranch. We're like it's just ranch, and the ranch just. Like I said, it exists, but it's not like it is here where we see it on every, you yeah. know, everything. There's, you know, kind of that sour cream and onion chip and all those yeah. things. So, yeah, spicy ranch is, is a, a passion of ours, but it, it was a fun <laughs> one. Like you said, it's not you. You would you would think they they would know it, but they they did. Ranch was was uh, was an interesting one. I want I wonder but how I think over we got, like, like over in Europe finally nailed it. How, how the spicy, you know, because ranch probably not, I can't see ranch being big in Europe. But... No, ranch... yeah. So we launched with chili limon and, and the red hot first okay. in, in Europe. And so our next, our next launch is, uh, is spicy ranch and original. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. There see you how go. we change that. Nothing to compare. Change, change, change the name though. Right, right. Like we'll have our, uh, you know the old Pulp Fiction, the Royale with cheese. We'll have to see what oh, yeah. what they want to call it down there. <laughs> see, see, see if they come up with another name for it. We just had that talk. That's funny. Is that the the restaurant right off of La Cienega? And we you drive by it. The the restaurant where the uh, from Pulp Fiction. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So we just it's funny. We were just talking about the Royale with cheese. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be the the spicy whatever they want to call the. Uh, well, we yeah. we re we renamed. Um, because our U.S. version of the chili limon is, um, well, it's called chili limon, but in in Europe, in the U.K., they're like, wow, oh, chili limon. It didn't translate like using that name, so it's chili, chili L L I, and lime. Um, 
So it was just kind of like to your point, changing yeah. things to sort of adapt to local local culture. Gotta do it. Yeah. Well, cool, man. I, thanks for the time, bro. I appreciate it. And uh and the good chips. You're it's gonna be a, it's gonna be fun to watch Chip Boys grow. So uh, you got the website, which is chipboys.com and then and then social. And then our social is uh, at eat chipoys on Instagram and, and TikTok. Yeah, and I'll have all the links on my website too. So if any of the listeners want to check it out, it'll be yeah, there. Yeah, I definitely appreciate it. I'm glad you glad you enjoyed the chips. Um, yeah. and we'll, we'll we'll get some more out to you and and uh, yeah, good to I'll, good I'll good to it. talk yeah. to you. Pre- yeah, appreciate the time. It, 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 ha- have fun with the family this weekend. I will. Thank you. Right, and you Thanks. too. Enjoy your granddaughter. Yeah, thanks.